experiences. Yeah. Or the fact that they have experimental mode available and just haven't used it. How many people just learned right now that there was an experimental mode on their Comma 3? Yeah, Did we advertise it well in the release notes? <coughs> it turns out not that many people read the blog, so... I guess they read the release notes, though. Do they, though? Or do they just click accept to everything? Yeah. All right, we, we got to get some people interacting. This has got to be a Twitter space. You know, come on. Where's the guy who's a jackass from the Elon Twitter space? Let's get him in here. You got some questions? Let's go. That's what you get when you have a thousand people. That's more <laughs> no, that's what we get when we're not controversial. <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, this is the real truth. We have to, we have to sell controversy. Is that, is that what it takes to succeed in the modern world? Mm, it would be nice if it didn't. Just mm. need... I need a way to reward non-controversial value. Well, there's so many people in here now, but they have nothing to say. We have 37 people listening. And Does have... anyone know what they want us to say? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you can talk. Talk, talk, talk. You're already a speaker. You could just click the unmute. Yeah, I mean, you put a good point out there. So, like, I'm going to post-shame myself right now. I've had my Comma 3 for almost eight months, but I have had an EV6 with HDA1, like, <coughs> The way the Korean market's going, obviously, y'all understand that, like, can FD may be a problem. Any workarounds, future state with, like, shrinking pandas or making it more sleek like y'all did with the Comet 3, just because I'm looking at all the peripherals I'm running, and I'm just like, holy crap, this is intimidating yeah. for the layperson, right? The, the red panda install is not the best. Uh, we're working on it. Uh, we're, we're definitely working on it. I mean, it does work and it will stay supported, but, uh, I mean, you could imagine sort of what's going to happen there. Um, you know, no, no, it'll be a while, but I mean, eventually the, yeah, CanFD will come native to the device. Uh, you know, it just takes time to trickle these things down. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, no, the Red Panda install, it's also pretty confusing. I think Alex and Adib were talking about adding a kit to the website. It's not going to save money. It's just a kit that uh, includes all the stuff you need if you don't want to have to read a whole bunch of stuff to figure it out. You just need the red panda, though, right? And extra no, kits. I think you need two harnesses. Oh, I don't know. We're, 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 we're uh, fortunate enough to have... Uh, who did the Nick did the EV6 install? I still haven't installed it. We, we just got handed the EV6 with already installed. Uh, we recognize this isn't the experience for everybody. So you know what? We're going to make everybody suffer. And we're going to make them install Red Pandas. Um, and be like, wow, this is terrible. I can't believe we're asking users to do this. Uh, but yeah, no, it will get better. Yeah, as I look at my uh, my Red Panda and my comma three in the little compartment underneath the cup holder right now. So wait, I think we have there you go. Case in point. Wait, wait, wait. The red panda is gonna get smaller though, right? Did we ever ship small red pandas? I don't know anything about that. Oh, we have some small red pandas. The new red pandas use we made a little chiplet with the with the so the red pandas the old red pandas have a large STM H seven in them. Uh, it's like really large. It's like the biggest chip you've ever seen. Uh no the chip is like it's 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 it's, it's large. Uh, there were a lot of supply chain issues which are now just starting to clear up. Um, yeah, which has been really painful for like prices. And part of the reason also we can do the price cut, it, part of it's in sourcing, but the other part of it is like, we're starting to see the end of supply chain issues uh, and we're able to actually buy what we need to buy. Um, the new tiny red panda is gonna have so that H7 microcontroller, it comes in a bunch of different variants. Uh, and uh, yeah, so instead of using the big chip, we're gonna use a tiny chip. But the issue with the tiny chip is the tiny chip is so tiny that it can't fit on a normal PCB. So we made like an adapter PCB, made like the high density PCB that's really tiny that kind of like just adapts it. and has a bunch of capacitors and uh, the crystal and like a bunch of support components on it. <clears throat> What else do people want to know? Do you guys got you guys got to ask questions, you know? Is there anyone cool to talk to at CES? Yeah, did anyone see anything good at CES? We're, we're sitting in the Airbnb and we're like, I don't know, do I want to go back? I don't know. See it all tomorrow. What did Zooks have to show? Did anyone go to the Zooks booth? 
Amazon had a lot of self-driving stuff, but I didn't check it out. With Rivian or just Amazon? Uh, I guess just Amazon. Wait, but they bought Zooks and Rivian. They did. Oh, they're really playing bingo. And what's Amazon going to do with all their money? They know that delivering packages to people isn't going to last as a business for Oh, wait, no. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's the oil companies. <laughs> All right, we got we got another comment from the audience. Uh, live view of mine. Oh, oh, I see. So you're you're posting. Uh, uh, what were the booths next to you guys doing? One of them was doing like lidar. Yeah, no, the red panda install will get better. Don't worry. Um, the booths next to you were doing lidar. What was the other one? I to talk to. They had blinking brake lights. That's all I really know about them. And then, like, Dragon Pilot booth. Were Dragon Pilot's booth? Yeah. Which did they actually? Uh, well, the guy who made Dragon Pilot works at a company that has a booth. Oh, I, I didn't realize they had a booth. I thought they were just there. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, the guy who makes Dragon Pilot was, was there today. We talked to him. We were thinking about maybe going with MediaTek chips uh, in the far future because Qualcomm's terrible and NVIDIA's terrible. You know, we, we wish it wasn't that way, but. MediaTek's Chinese too. MediaTek's Taiwanese. Oh, it's not Rockchip. You say two. No, no, Taiwan, Taiwanese is not Chinese. I mean, Rockchip is Chinese. Yeah, Rockchip is Chinese. Yeah. I see. Rockchip Chinese. Uh, I mean, Rockchip's highest end chip is not really good enough. I see. Like, it's it's on par with the A45, and no one wants to do a lateral port. You know, I mean, that's probably interesting. Yeah. What if TI releases one of their chips? They will not. Five, et cetera. TI will never do that. TI makes incredible chips, but they will not be more powerful than the ones they release. The ones they're releasing now. So the, the ADAS chip is like half as powerful as the 845, right? Uh, no, not even. Oh, no, no, the TDA, they we're talking about the TDA 4VM. The TDA 4VM is, is pretty underpowered. I think it's, I think it's dual core. If it has a GPU, it's really tiny. It has some weird neural Doesn't accelerator. GPU, I think just the tensor thing. Yeah, it has tensor. Like, I don't deal with that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, no TI, no, I mean like what companies make chips that are good enough? NVIDIA, Qualcomm, uh, MediaTek, Huawei, Samsung, but yeah, I mean Huawei and Samsung, good luck by, MediaTek's probably the most approachable of all those companies. Are they in anything? I I've heard. They're in phones. A lot, oh. a lot of lower end Android phones are MediaTek. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, we have nine comments now. What are all these comments? Oh. Have you and Elon discussed autonomy? You guys think I just like hung out with Elon and we just talked about things? That didn't really happen, guys. Um, I had a conversation with him in a Twitter space. Uh, I use it and it is great. Thank you. What is the long-term goals of Comma? And he talks of partnerships with other companies, with car companies. Guys, this is the most boring question ever. What do you think that means? What do you think a partnership with a car company means? Rivian giving us a free car, car to do a port. Well, if Rivian wants to give us a free car to do a port, we're happy to do it. That, that's most of the, yeah. You know what? If some car company is serious and they want to give us a free car, I think for almost any car, if they gave us a free car, we'd do it for it. Yeah, I guess. So. And like the car was reasonable? Like not like some like unreasonable, ridiculous thing. Like unreasonably difficult. Unreasonably difficult. Or unreasonably shitty. No, unreasonably difficult. Oh, I see. I think even most flex red cars, it's probably true for. If someone really wanted to give us like a... Yeah, for an Audi Q7? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or no, I'm thinking like a, like a, you want, you want to give me like a, like a Porsche 911. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm interested. Um, so yeah, if you want to give me a car, uh, that's how we can start a nice partnership. If you've given me a car. Now, otherwise, I don't really understand what you mean by partnership. Um, do you mean integrating OpenPilot in the car? Well, you don't need us for that. You can just do software. You just take it and install it on in your car. Uh, I mean, this is why, like, the Chinese are going to win cars, because they're going to do that, and, like, some companies won't, and, like, it's going to be like TCL on the TVs, man. It's literally going to be TCL on the TVs. Like, 
cars are going to get there. I mean, I was, you ever driven one of the Neos or X-Pangs or whatever they are? Well, those are pretty good, actually. The ADAS or as cars? No, as cars. Like, they're, I mean, I'm not even talking about them. I think there's going to be a whole nother tier of Chinese car companies that's basically like the Dell of cars. Because mm. right? with electric cars, like, with a, with a, you're trying to build a nice car, like, where are you getting the engine? You can't build an engine. Forget it. Those companies have perfected those engines for so many years. Yeah. But you want to build an electric car, you know, buy a motor from that guy, buy batteries from that guy, buy a chassis from that guy, stick it together. It's like building a computer. But can um, they compete with Tesla? Um, Won't they just be more efficient owning the stack? Can they compete with Tesla? I mean, Tesla's ain't that cheap. Yeah. I know, but are they not more efficient for owning the whole stack? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe if Tesla really owns, like, who's getting the batteries? And... Well, yeah, I guess they don't produce all their own batteries yet, do they? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a way to compete with Tesla on the high end. I mean, yeah, but that's not really it. Which is kind of what you're saying. I'm waiting till I get the Ford Maverick hybrid truck this year. And then I'll buy Kama. Unless I find a better hybrid truck. Currently, I drive a 2012 Lincoln MKZ, so it doesn't work for me. What is the idea? I assume you mean ideal vehicle for Kama. Anyone have it installed on a truck? I mean, we have it installed in our truck. Yeah, we have a Dodge Ram. Dodge Ram 1500 Limited. Great car. Drives Cars? off road. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Looks> American. <laughs> uh, is it good or does it like cut turns and stuff? Uh, it's not as good as it should be. Well, one of the problems, we're going to fix this, but one of the problems is the truck's really high and the thing's not really designed to, but we'll fix that. Yeah, we explicitly have a filter in the data set that filters out road height detected over 1.5 meters. Wait, do we actually? Yeah, because we thought no car will ever be that tall until, I see. We, until we found out about trucks. I see. <laughs> All right. Well, we we're gotta... moving that right now. You see doing that now. You see him doing that right now. Great. Gotta, we gotta filter that out. All right. Is anyone raising their hand and wants to talk? Got, got no hand raisers. But we have 44 people now. It's, it's growing a little. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Um, any more comments here? Are you guys offering partnerships with retail stores and offer installation for end user? Well, why don't you do it? Right? Do you need me? Uh, it was the same thing with jailbreaks, right? Again, I really don't like this word partnership, right? Because partnership is, is, is the most ambiguous garbage I've ever heard. What are you specifically saying we do with retail stores? Are you saying we give them free devices and then they install them and pay us? No, because then I got to come knock your door down when you don't give me the devices back. I don't want to be a creditor, right? But right now, I think it's still 15% if you buy right now. But we yeah. got we to change it to 10 because now they're too good of a deal. Um, if you buy 10 devices, we'll give you 10% off, right? And then charge your $500 premium on top of it for your installation. And there you go. Boom. You're making money, right? Um, but yeah, so, so are we doing partnerships with retail stores and offer installation? Like you can just do that. You don't need me. Why do you need me? Um, is comma buying open AI? I don't think we can, <laughs> I don't think we can afford open AI. We can offer. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, no. I think they lose a lot of money. I think that if the minute we bought OpenAI, we'd be bankrupt in two weeks. You want to keep all those GPUs running for ChatGPT? Right? No, you're just, you want to be Microsoft's bitch? Like, buy OpenAI. Wait, do the credits not pay for the GPUs? The credits? It's free. ChatGPT has credits now? Oh, it's free. ChatGPT's been free for a while. Yeah, it doesn't have credits. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to be Microsoft's bitch, you can buy OpenAI. Um, let's see, do we have more things? Oh, someone post this on the Discord. Did no one post this on the Discord? No, I can do it. Cool. Join our Twitters. I'm sure people on Discord want to talk. Oh, we have 12 comments now. Good. You got to give me content to interact with. Um, are driving controls significantly better on supported EVs or is it roughly compatible between EV and gas cars? Wait, sorry, I was 
looking at Discord. What was the question? Uh, are driving controls significantly better on supported EVs, or is it roughly compatible between EV and gas cars? It's the same. The only difference is that it shifts on a gas car, but that shifts with a human too. Does that bother you? As a human driver? It even shifts on a Honda Civic with a CVT. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love the shift? Shifts don't upset you as a human driver, it shouldn't be a problem for a Oh, you meant selling them in a retailer like Best Buy and they install them for you. Uh, I bet does Best Buy install things? Yeah, I know they do. They make a lot of money on this stuff. Oh, it's like the Ikea, add a person to your couch. Yeah, order. yeah, yeah, the Geek Squad will plug oh, it in. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, we can get there. <coughs> um, We can get there, I don't know. We'll deal with talking to Best Buy, like not really. Uh, no, look, uh, it's basically this, like the Comet 3 was too expensive. Hopefully it's not too expensive anymore. Um, it didn't do enough and hopefully now it does enough. So it like does more and it's cheaper. Uh, if that doesn't work to get lots of growth, then, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to, what to say. How do I think Comet 3 will stack up against V11 FSD? I mean... We're one to two years behind Tesla. We've been one to two years behind Tesla for a long time, and we will continue to be one to two years behind Tesla. It'll be more comfortable and less clashing. Yeah, you can go on Reddit, and you can read the comparisons between OpenPilot and Tesla, Autopilot and FSD, and like, but yeah, it depends what you want. So I got some Twitter uh, questions from the Discord. Wait, did they come on the Twitter space? Uh, what, or do these just, guys just not have Twitter? They're just asking here. Plans to add long support for more models. Yes, we are planning to add long support to more models. Especially as experimental mode gets better, that's more of a priority. What else you got? Uh, okay, that was the uh, only one, actually. That was the only question we got? Oh, we have 16 comments now. There was a lot of questions about whether they could ask questions. Oh, you're... And no questions. I don't. I don't understand. That's the worst question in the world. Can I ask a question, bro? You just did, and it was a bad question. Um, how many Comet threes can we produce per month now or in the near future? Uh, so I think we can produce five hundred a month now. Uh, I mean, it depends. So a lot of this depends on when parts come in. Uh, I think we've done five hundred before, and yeah, I mean, we're working on. We're continually working on improving the manufacturing process to reduce time uh so yeah i think it's going to be i think it's 500 now and hopefully by the end of the year it's a thousand i mean our goal is to sell 10,000 units this year so yeah we're going to have to get that up to a thousand anyone want to raise their hand and ask a question you guys want to type your questions Nabil wants a spinning head of himself instead of the comma logo. Well, Nabil can run the Nabil fork, which does that. Um, is the solo camera going to be enough the more comma evolves? What solo camera? Have you looked at a comma three? <laughs> One, two, three. Uh, is that enough? Well, it's enough for, what, 99.99% .99 of driving. Have you learned anything at Twitter that applies to Calm on the Open Pilot? Yeah, don't ever be Twitter. <laughs> uh, no, just that like building a good development environment is really important. I already kind of knew that, but Twitter just really reinforced that idea. Um, I don't have any more dumb questions, but I think I speak for the community as a whole when saying we appreciate the interaction from all of you and we feel like part of the adventure. Companies don't do this today. Yeah, because most companies are scams, guys. Look, some, someone realized, and this isn't really true anymore, but someone realized that it was actually a lot better to sell shares instead of selling a box. Because the problem with a box is it can break. People have expectations for a box. Like, the only expectation people have for a share is that the number go up. And as long as people keep buying the shares with that expectation, the number actually will go up. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, but yeah, so companies that uh, you know run scams aren't going to be open and transparent with you, obviously. I mean, yeah, they've just got stuff to hide. Uh, yeah, so many people are just terrified. You talk to so many people and you ask them questions like, I don't know if I can say that. Yeah. 
Um, what do I look for in a potential intern? Commits to open pilot. I mean, guys, like, it's not like we don't have, like, a secret rubric. You go and you do external work. Look at the last people who got hired for OpenPilot. They were external contributors to OpenPilot. It's actually pretty easy. You're like, but I can't contribute to OpenPilot. Well, great. Why the fuck would I hire you? Like, <laughs> it's pretty straightforward stuff. If you do well in the calibration challenge, you basically get a gu guaranteed interview. It's a very objective metric. There's a script that evaluates your code. Yeah. It's just a programming challenge. Nothing vague. Uh, are we hiring more people for research? Yeah, they do very well. No, they do very well. Do you want more people? Yeah, if they're very good. All right, great. Uh, so stoked to finally have a compatible car and use comma, Bolt EUV. Yeah, a lot of people have been buying it for the Bolt lately. We should really make sure that port's really good. We have a Bolt, so it's going to get good. An experimental long seems to act worse at night, tunnels and rain. Is that a known issue? Uh, not really, I guess. And it seems to slow to reach target speed at any lane. That is a known issue that we are working on. <coughs> AE did this better, but not quite there. Yeah, so the autoencoder models are a lot better at speed convergence. Uh, we can't ship them yet because there's still some issues. Um, but that's the direction we're going. And the more we go in that direction, the more it will like be reliable at converging to highway speeds. At nighttime, the autoencoder models leak the headlights. Right? If they tell you where the headlight is and then you try to reproject it in a simulator, uh, it cheats. Yeah, it turns out you need a lot more than depth to actually reproject the scene when it comes to lights. I mean, I talked about the fancier stuff a lot. It's just like, you know, depth is just kind of, you know it's going to kind of work. You know it's going to be better than what you have. I just didn't expect the issues with the lights to come so quickly. I thought we could kind of ignore them. Well, no, you're going to have to do something for the headlights. I don't think the other lights are that big a deal. No, but we did a lot of augmentation, and it fixes like 99% of it. Wait, the headlights? Yeah. Oh, so you already fixed that? 99% of it. I mean, like car drives at night. Yeah, exactly. No, but you gotta, well, you got to model the headlights. It's not that bad. I mean, we tried all this stuff, and it fixes almost all of it. You tried modeling the headlights, not just augmenting like... Uh, I think we tried that too, yeah. But the problem is... No, I, I know you did random, where you just randomly made some patches bright and some patches dim. Well, that was the most effective in the test, at least. Yeah, but you probably also want to model the headlight and subtract it out or something. The problem is when you're close to a barrier, like, you know, those highway concrete yeah. barriers, the lights against them are so strong. Yeah. It's really difficult to modify the image there. Great, so it fails. So we we got we to gotta just switch to something real. Well, that's what we're working on now. Yo, guys, one of these days, we're going to hit something real, and the simulator's not going to fight us anymore, and the model's just going to drive beautifully. And then we're going to train it on 17 million GPUs, and then we're going to stick a 3090 in your car, and it's going to be level 5. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we've we, we got to figure out how to augment the other cameras, too. So, so, you know. I mean, we just need, like, GTA 5, but in the machine model's head. What is how it works? I mean, like, why does WASD, if you just go forward on a video and have the machine learning model imagine, why doesn't it just keep drawing? What, did you try dynamics models and see what it does? Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, it was very mediocre, I know. I mean, yeah, but we're not using the right dynamics model. Do we use VQVAE? Uh, you've seen train a couple of those. I don't know what the status of that is. Well, like, that's going to work. Dynamics models were not going to work until you have VQVAE. No, I mean, that is the approach that you've seen it's using. Yeah. I mean, it'll work, and like, we're gonna start to see these from mainstream AI labs, like this year or next year. Yeah. Everyone wants to do. Everyone wants to do video synthesis. No, I mean it's the obvious next step. Right? No, and all the video, like, you know, yeah, all the all the dollies and stuff. We're gonna we're gonna do video volley. No, I know. Ah. Uh, okay, we got a few people who requested this. Good. We got some people who want to talk. Oh, I can turn off my turn my auto rotation off back. Welcome, welcome to the Twitter space. Welcome. Oh, and we have twenty eight. Wow, we have so many comments externally. Oh, I guess I can beat those too. We got new speakers. What do you all want to say? Hey Hello? George, I, I commented uh, this question. I'll I'll ask it instead. Sure. Um, are you still working on the um, 
the comma body or is that just kind of a side project um, um, that's not going anywhere? Yeah, it's definitely going somewhere. It's just a question of what the time frame is. Um, long term, there's no future in self-driving cars. Uh, and I'll tell you why. If two things are going to happen. Uh, one, like, when you get to a long tail, it does become not only a terrible grind, but also a just a real problem of how do you prove the success of this thing. And at that point, the only thing you can really do is become an insurance company. And that sounds very boring. Uh, and two, you're again running up against things that are just that are just like not fun. Why do you want to deal with this long tail? You want to solve the problem, be like, cool, we solved the problem, and then move on to the next thing where we can actually make progress on a problem. And the next thing that's really very similar to what Kama is doing today is home robotics. Uh, so the body is the future of Kama, right? The body, in a way, is the future of OpenPilot, too, right? Think about it. When people say they want a self driving car, this is not a car, it's a person. It's a person that sits down in the driver's seat, drives the car, and doesn't talk to you, or you be most taxi drivers. Um, but yeah, so it's a it's, uh, five years. The plan for Kama is really to fully be a robotics company. But in the next five years, I think we're going to make a lot of money uh, selling ADOS boxes. Uh, the, the, the total addressable market for Kama is huge. The amount of supported cars that are currently on the road and how quickly that's still growing. Uh, so I think we can you know, start making $100 million a year revenue selling ADAS boxes. that um it wasn't just a side project and it and could be you know a, a a successful product line uh if i could make a request i'd love for i know you do a lot of streams which i watch if you could maybe post more videos of you testing um you know development uh trial and error crashing the thing uh that would be awesome to follow i um, would love to as soon as you start selling them specifically because I have a car that you, that comma doesn't support. So I've been following comma just as a fan, uh, never been able to buy the, 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 um, the self-driving aspect. But when you released that video on the comma body, it was very exciting for somebody like me. We have some other things planned for comma robotics. The body might have been a little bit ambitious. Uh, you know, what do you guys think of like a puppy? You know, just, a, just a puppy, guys. Like having a puppy, right? A puppy. What does it do? Oh, it's cute. It runs around. It scampers. Uh, so, yeah, I think there'll be some new cool robotics content coming next year. I've been talking about how I want the new office teeming with robotic life. I think anything around a $1,000 price point, people like me are going to want to purchase. So. Make yeah, something cool. I, think, I think that's about the price point we're sticking to for our robots. Uh, but you also need a head, right? The head's not included. Uh, but now the heads are only $14.99. They're a great deal. And when you look at the Comma 3, it really is a head, right? It has two eyes. It has two ears. People are trying to remove an ear. People are trying to Van Gogh the Comma 3. It's not going to happen. Two ears. Uh, all right, we let another speaker in. What does the other speaker have to say? Sorry for putting you on the spot. Hi, uh, this is Cormac McKay here um, from the Autonomous Vehicle Association of Ireland. Ah, believe it or not. Um, uh, so 2022 will go down as one of the worst years for deaths and accidents on US ro roads. Um, uh, uh, one of the highest uh, number of deaths and accidents in the past 20 years. So one of the things I work on here in Ireland is lobbying and uh, to make this sort of technology compulsory on all vehicles. Um, I, I'm just wondering if you guys have considered lobbying uh, the Department of Transport and Secretary Pete on making uh, the, these types of devices compulsory on all vehicles on US high. I highways. would never do that. I mean, I, I would never I would never. Uh... I'm never touching lobbying in my life. Like I'd rather like, I'd rather work at a KFC. Uh, but no, I mean, that's just me. Um, no, I agree largely with regulations that mandate things like AEB on new cars. Uh, 
Uh, I think, again, ADAS tech is, we consider Comet to be much more of a convenience feature than a safety feature. Uh, our bar for safety is human driving. So we have to make sure it's at least as safe uh, as human driving. And we're confident we've, we've passed that quite a bit. But well, that's a poor bar, isn't it? Well, again, it's what's already out there, right? We're a convenience feature. We are not a safety feature. Um, we do not make any claims about safety aside from the, it's not going to make you drive less safe. Um, you know, again, safety is very much your choices as a driver. Uh, if you choose to pay attention, you know, you're immediately doing way better. The, the thing that's, I think, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't actually know what the data says on this, but I do know that accidents have ticked up slightly and it's, it's probably phones, right? Um, well, it's a, a, a multiple of reasons, but it has been proven that ADAS systems do improve um, uh, quality of driving. Oh, quality, and, um, quality. Yeah, prevent. The, the experience driving is much better with the ADAS systems. But no, like, are we going to start lobbying to make it compulsory? No. But do I support some, like, yeah, if you want to sell a car in 2025, it has to have AEB? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that, and sure. best of luck in the future, guys. All right, what else we got? Uh, image prime equals image already. Now we need dynamics. Wait, you see, you you really think you really think the uh, this is good enough? You oh think? yeah, I saw it. It's really good. Wait, what did they what do you use? It's just an auto encoder, DQVA auto encoder. No, but what what did you use again? I think so. Yeah. Oh, you use again. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, our, our reconstruction. All right, all right. I'm glad our reconstruction. Sorry, guys, one more question sure. there for you. Uh, what about your global rollout? What's your plan? It's already global. What do you mean by global? Well, you can buy it anywhere. It works anywhere. Uh, yeah, but it's not being promoted quite heavily here in Europe. We don't do any promotion Europe. anywhere. Um, we do zero promotion. We don't do marketing. Uh, we don't do advertising. I mean, unless you count this as marketing. a world of broadcast media advertising made sense but in a world of social media all you need it's 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 you are not it is what is your person for every person who buys the device how many people do they then get to buy the device um so i mean yeah there's things we can do to make the european experience better i don't know if there's anything we can do about the customs um yeah very good. But uh, yeah, the customs is kind of annoying. But yeah, I mean, they're sold everywhere and they're promoted equally everywhere, which is not promoted at all. I think 20% of our users are, uh, of the data we get in is not in the US. So that's a pretty decent chunk. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of European users. That, that is pretty good. Sure. Thanks, guys. Uh, what are the... I have a question, concept, validation request. That's a load. I validate you. I validate you. <laughs> uh, if you want to raise your hand in this space and you want to talk, um, any more questions from Discord? I'm looking now. Oh, someone asks uh, if Prius or Corolla are confirmed to have security, will we jailbreak one? Um, I don't know. Is it confirmed? Does anyone even know? What? There's so much speculation. But what? The Corolla and Prius. I'll do Toyota security whenever anyone buys votes. You obviously do not care enough if you haven't bought votes. That's that's we sell votes, and if you if people buy five hundred votes, we'll crack Toyota security. Um. um Greg and Yassin, you guys want to share anything? Greg, you want to share anything about Toyota security? Yassin, you want to talk about the auto encoders? You got you to gotta, gotta ask to be speakers. Um, what about your global rollout? Multiple people ask this. Like, no, no, that's just the same guy. He no, 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 no. There's another person. There's another person who asks, are there plans to expand to Europe? Like, we already are in Europe. Yeah, we're in Europe. Just buy one. You're you planning to do an Europe. alliance with a big car company. <laughs> an alliance? Are you open to a potential acquisition? Look, 
if it helps the mission, yes, but no. If you get acquired by Toyota, your tech doesn't go in Toyota. You go in Toyota, right? I think that's what. And then you know, all these companies, um, you know, get acquired by these companies, and then it's just you just go to die. Like a lot of these companies just want to buy you so that nobody else can have you. It's terrible. Um, so no, not really open to acquisition. Let me explain how you make money. You make money by selling lots of small boxes and then doing share buybacks with all your excess money. Uh, oh, you see he wants to talk. You seen I heard the I heard the new models look good. Hey. Um yeah, the new um the new VAE models are good. Do, do I owe um, you a computer? Uh I think so. <laughs> can I not tell the difference <laughs> if you put two? Can I not tell you which one's the I'll send you a grid. All right, all right. Great, great, great. So the deal was the deal was to train a model that compresses images from our fleet. Um and uh, reconstructs them and they look completely similar and i think the i think that was, that was done now this is going to be used this is going to be used to the, together with the dynamics model to um to have a an ml based simulator basically and hopefully this is going to be better than our small offset simulator is uh do we have to make the bits a lot bigger or same number of bits um it's uh i think it's uh, four times iris. It's f four x the number of bits of iris. But iris was kind of small. It's it's this, it's exactly the same as the what taming transformer they used. Did I lose the mic? No. What's happened? Um. Yeah, for people listening, the idea is kind of when you drive, you can like imagine driving. You could do like rollouts in your head. You could be like, oh, I see what's going to happen if like a car cuts in there. Oh, I see what's going to happen when the light changes, right? Uh, so even if, I mean, ideally, eventually we want the model to do that at, uh, at inference time. But let's start with making the model do that at train time. Think about what's going to happen, and then think about where you should be. Yeah, like like GTA, like you can drive around <coughs> in imagination, and the world just keeps getting rendered. Well, GTA has a map, though. We can give it a map. Can we, though? Yeah, why not? Well, I mean, this always separates the problem. Like, great, we're going to make dynamics models. I think we can make good dynamics models, maybe even ones that can keep video coherent for ten seconds. But then, what do you use for the what do you use for the policy? Right, what do you use for? Oh, is it the ground truth? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. All right. At the very yeah, that's gonna be the difficulty. I'm sure we can solve this. I mean, this sounds like a much more approachable problem than like cheating in the simulator. Oh yeah, but don't you just have like an evaluator that like both evaluates real data and your data and is like, this seems good, this seems human-like. I could make a. Oh, it has to be adversarial. Yeah, you're asking a question like, given this rollout, we've talked about this before. The problem here is if your simulator looks anything different from real data, this model ball. Yeah, no, it needs to be indistinguishable. It needs to be indistinguishable to this other model that 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 does that. Yeah. Um. And that can be done in the dynamics level. It doesn't have to be done as pixel level. Yeah, I mean that's not feature level. I, that's the whole. That's why I'm so excited for these auto coders. I mean, also uh, maybe it's just because I'm bad at calculus. But the reason I really like the VQVAEs <laughs> is uh, so uh, VQVAE is is discrete, meaning it turns the image into pretty much a sentence. Like it turns each image from the drive into like a, you know, uh, maybe a. 16,000 word vocabulary in four words, or 10 words. Uh, all right, Kale, what do you got? 
Hey, I finally figured out the spaces thing. Sorry about that. I, I was watching and you uh, asked and I wasn't able to, but I got it now. So, uh, question for you guys too, in fact, uh, your website and, and listings for the the models that your uh, device works for, it shows a Escalade 2016 model, um, but I have a, a 19. Um, would it Would it still be able to uh, interface there and uh, obviously I have to get a harness made and all that good stuff but would a 2019 model be applicable for Does the your unit? car have adaptive cruise control and uh yep yep, yep. It, sure, it sure does yes if it has if, is, if, if, if it has ACC and LCAS I'm sure you can make it work right cool uh I figured as much I wanted to hear from you guys first and I'll probably be getting one and then uh second one is you know I got this kind of concept that would be cool i mean people go take their cars get stereos installed or you know you go down and get uh customizations this and that i think that for the masses to adopt something like this it would be helpful for most people to be able to take their car somewhere and have this installed is that a concept that you want to you you get rich you know, oh. that's what i'm saying what are you, what are you exactly. looking for that'd be rad well, we need to purchase all a bunch of your units at wholesale. Right. Uh, <laughs> so it's right now it's fifteen percent off if you buy ten or more. Cool. Um, also, that's cool. You don't actually need remember you can charge a lot for that installation service, right? Yeah. Like you can yep. you could probably sell this to people for three grand, like if you market it correctly. It might even might even be a, a subscription model. Also, I mean, you could have it monthly, so you could, you know, or something you wanna, like you that. You want to deal with chasing dead beats down for credit? You can. You're willing, <laughs> well, if I, you're I a, to take that. I run a business now. If you're willing and, to deal with all this bullshit, there's actually a lot of money to be made. Um, yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, people. A lot of people come to me still, and they're like, George, you know, I made money on in high school using the jailbreaks, and they would basically charge money yeah. to run my jailbreak on people's phones. <laughs> Um, right exactly i mean a couple different models there would definitely be successful and uh would there be like would you be able to reach out on like a, a commercial side on a support like would would it ever be possible to reach out for support on not being a retail right, right, customer right, 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 right. you know why didn't you mean to do this why can't you do that uh, I'm, I'm not you i mean like the company if, if possible i had a shit ton of yeah. units out there yeah. and you know why do you need me to do support you can do support now it's five thousand right, five thousand dollars to your customers yep yep I, yep. i just cool. honestly i don't deal with any of this uh it's not really yep. worth it like uh huh? at a like i mean it's, i'm sure it's worth it financially but again this just isn't the kind of company we want to be we want to solve this technical problem and then go on to solve other right. fancier technical problems um, will there be a, a time in which you're you're going to 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 want these products mass produced? They're they're currently mass produced, but is that the business model, or are you guys moving on from this being the the revenue for the company, the actual device? No, selling, is selling that, devices uh, is going to be our revenue stream for a long time. Uh, right. We boxes, right. So the more you sell, the better. We don't care who buys them. You know, whether whether whether. Yep installers buy them whether dealerships buy them whether car companies buy them whether individuals buy them yep. look it's a very simple business model we build a device yep. for cheaper than we sell mm -hmm. it for and then we make profit yeah, on the remaining right like i feel like things are so messed up in business today that like this kind of like real one-on-one -on -one shit is just kind of forgotten look we sell the device at 14.99 now they cost us about about 850 to make pocket the rest yep Cool. I appreciate it, man. Uh, thanks for your time, and you guys have a great Great, one, dude. Greg, do you have anything to share on Toyota security? Guess not. No. Does anyone actually use professional stereo install services? I feel like I see so many shops. Yeah, I mean, it was probably like a thing in the 90s. And then, like, they're just still there. All right, we got DG. Now, Deeb's on here, too. Deeb, you want to share anything from the from the to the hall, from the from the the booth? DJ, you could talk. Deep's not Deep's not a speaker yet. 
Oh, how's it going, guys? I heard um, heard, heard you talking about people buying commas on wholesale and selling it. Um, and you're saying make a profit on installing it. But my concern was, well, people, if anybody's done it here, has has anybody come after them saying, like, you know, say it's a non-technical person in there and you install it in for them. Are they going to – has anybody come after you about that? I mean, come after. Who's coming after me? Yeah, yeah but, no, no, not you. I was not saying common, but – I'm saying is some non-technical person, if you're putting this in their car, uh, you know they're not gonna they're not gonna understand it. And some people might just think it's gonna make their car just do whatever. And now, of course, you could oh. tell them it's, it has its limitations. But I mean, we, we have we have multiple people around the world already doing this as a business, where they they buy you know ten units from us, sell them to people for a price we don't even know. Uh, and they keep coming back. So, you know, they're making money. Um, as far as how you communicate with your customer, I mean, that's between you and your customer, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I was wondering if people, uh, I don't want to get into all legal things, but if people like made contracts with customers, but that's, I mean, that's, that's more than that's other than just your business. That's more of the side business people make. Sounds like, yeah, again, this kind of thing, both legally and uh, informally, is a thing between you and your customer, right? Like, you can buy it, you can promise that these things will wash your dishes for you, and then, you know, the customers will be like, but it didn't wash any dishes. Well, you know, that's between you and your customer, man. Uh, George, you're right, man. Uh, George, guys, th thank you, guys. I appreciate everything you're doing. Decentralize the power, baby. Thank, thank, you, thank, thank you for everything, George. Sure. Wait, Adib, Adib went away. Adib, Adib was on, and then he went away. Wasn't interested. Nope. No, something happened at the booth. That must have been exciting. <sighs> the Twitter space is still growing. Hey, uh, George. Sorry, I'm taking. I'm going out of turn again. Sure. You ever going to come back to Twitter? <laughs> no, I'm done with Twitter. Oof. Poor poor T said, "What's the announcement? I didn't catch up." Someone said, "Price drop." He said, "Ordering now." Nice. Oh, Greg wants to talk. Hey, Greg. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, do I have this set up right? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Everyone can hear you. Oh, okay. I, uh, do you want to talk about Toyota security? I mean, people are interested in that. I heard you got the firm. That's what I, yeah. So yeah, we got the, uh, I've looked at the firmware. Uh, the first thing is, is I, I've, I've heard some rumors that like people thought that like there's some solution out there where like you can proxy or like, uh, you could basically like maybe the gateway or something does the the sec oc um verification mac checking yeah. yeah and uh that definitely doesn't seem to be the case uh it actually doesn't even uh doesn't even parse the parse the uh bits out of the message for steering unless you uh get through the the mac verification inside the the power steering firmware um so it does seem like you actually have to uh either modify the firmware or figure out a way to actually generate valid max for the uh, um, for the CAN messages that you send. I heard the other um, was all in software, though. It's not. It's not going to some hardware thing. That's correct. For, uh, there's uh, you, Autosar has quite a few spec documents out there that you can read, and um, they actually intentionally uh, wrote the spec using using things that were uh, achievable on very low end hardware, all in software, if that makes sense. Um, and so, so yeah, the, in the firmware that I've seen, it's all, it's all in software. Um, uh, so yeah, it seems like, uh, seems like there's a few options, you know, one is always refresh, re reflashing firmware where, you know, you, you make changes to, to things. Uh, the other is like figuring out how to get the keys out of the firmware. Uh, it does have read memory by address, but um, they block important ranges. Um, 
and the sec oc spec says things like you know make sure that you you know wait, wait, wait. you don't do, but do they have write memory by address uh they don't have write memory by address no mm -hmm. but there is um uh i found two ways that you can write the keys so you okay. can write the keys using routine control and then they also seem to have these special uh addresses there's like blocks of addresses where like it copies it all into memory and then once it's got like a full value um it'll use it the same way routine control uses it uh to then uh write a new key or, or overwrite keys uh but the problem is is you have to know a key to write a key that's right. that's like how the uh uh the key updating works and so what that means is even if you capture uh even if you capture the keys that are uh, say say you like use the Toyota tools to record it updating the keys. Uh, what you have are encrypted keys that are encrypted with another key on the device. Um, mm. So there may be some hope that like every one of them uses the same key. Uh, I haven't actually found there. There's uh there's like multiple sets of keys. There's a uh, I can't remember the names now. The the Seco C spec lays it all out. There's there's like a a master key um, that you can't change, and with the master key you can change any key, uh, and then there's like four other keys that you can easily change, and one of them is used for all the messages, all the Seco C messages, uh, and so like it's possible it's possible that the master key is the same on all of them. Um, I think the I think the the master I think all the keys have to be somewhere in the firmware. Uh, and I haven't found them, um, but well, actually, so the the uh, the um, the Seco C or the uh, the EPS that we have, um, it was never actually in a vehicle, and so the problem is, is I think that uh, they it never actually broke. wrote any keys out to it, uh, and I did find three keys, and they're like the default keys or something like that, and it is actually using the default keys. Uh, but I think the real keys are loaded from from like data flash or something like that. Um, and so don't have all that figured out because um, it's, it's, I don't know, there's some really complicated indirection stuff going on. Uh, it just isn't trivial to, to understand. And I haven't spent that much time looking at it, but. Um, yeah, but, it's, uh, I mean, but yeah. it sounds like there's good progress. Yeah, uh, the first thing that I found that was interesting was uh, um, I noticed that it actually doesn't do any of the SEC OC checking for like the first 1,000 iterations of some thread. So, huh. so, when, so when the power steering motor first starts up, you can actually sneak through a bunch of messages and it'll accept them and, and uh, parse them out and everything. Uh, but it's not super useful, obviously, in, in itself. Uh, but there also is a method that resets that, that counter. Um, <laughs> But I haven't figured out how you, I haven't figured out like a way to, to call resetting the counter. Basically like it only does sec OC parsing if this counter is greater than a thousand or something like that. Um, and so, so I suppose there's some hope that maybe there's a way to find to like constantly re reset that counter or, um, um, or maybe there'll be like some, some way to get read memory by address. Like, I don't know, maybe we can figure out some exploit to like get read memory by address to allow you to read. Yeah. Uh, so, so all the keys are in RAM. So all the keys are both on, they, they must be persisted somewhere, obviously. And then all the keys are also copied into RAM and that's where they're they're used uh, at runtime. And so, so- Does read memory by address let you jump the firmware? I don't believe so. The address ranges are really restricted for read memory by address. So it is super helpful for introspecting a lot of stuff while it's running to figure out like, is it actually parsing out the the CAN messages, um, the Seco C CAN messages, like how far is it getting through yeah, yeah. the the parsing process and so forth. But um, but yeah, it doesn't let you. I believe it doesn't let you read the flash. Um, the flash was read by um, by by putting it into like setting some pins to put it into the, uh, what is it called? The boot assist mode or whatever. Yeah. And then um, doing a voltage uh, brown out, like a voltage glitch to get it to skip past the security check, the, the key check 
um, in now the that, Buddhist mode. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that, that was crazy that that, that one got it dubbed. Um, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, no, so, but I'm, I'm sure I'm sure we'll figure something out. I mean, I, I bet the master key is the same on all of them. We just need to figure it out. Yeah, it may very well be. Um, uh, yeah, we just got to get the master key off one of them then. It's, it's all symmetric, right? Yes. It's all symmetric, hundred percent. Love it. And the Love keys, it. the keys are loaded. The keys are loaded in RAM. So if if somebody figures out a way to, uh, you know, to basically bypass the the read memory by address range restrictions, you could also easily read the keys out of RAM. I mean, um, yeah. Hopefully, the master keys all the same. What we do is we just get one into flashing mode. We reflash it with a patch read memory by address. Read the keys and it's done. Well, but then you have to change the keys. The problem with changing the keys, so the master key is only used to change other keys, basically. So the problem with changing the keys, uh, you could definitely change the keys, but the reason that changing the keys isn't super attractive is because then the stock system well, won't yeah, work anymore yeah, unless yeah. you change all the, unless you go through all the ECUs and also tell them about the, the key that you're changing it to, which is possible. I guess you could reverse engineer the whole Toyota, um, you know, update key update process no whatever, that's that's a lot I, i'm hoping that there's going to be some flag somewhere maybe that you just set it and it disables seco c verification yeah i've looked for that pretty hard uh and i've got like a lot of the configuration tables reverse engineered really well uh and willem's done quite a bit of work looking into it also and we haven't found any way to get it to bypass the closest thing i found was that counter basically that it, it ignores um, the uh, the seco C stuff until you've incremented it past that that magic value of a thousand or something like that. Yeah. Um, but so uh, I, I yeah, trust, so that's unfortunate. But I trust I trust we'll find something, um, or we'll just maybe be able to I don't know I'll look over the seco C thing. Maybe there's a way to just attack the algorithm directly. Yeah, potentially. I mean, there's a there's a DefCon talk out there. Uh, that I posted in our Discord a while ago, where the guy says, like, this guy from Intrepid Systems or whatever the company is, he says that, like, he was able to, like, you know, like, you record enough traffic and then you could potentially um, essentially, like, brute force it or whatever, uh, or build, like, a rainbow table or something. I'm not exactly sure what he was describing. I don't really completely understand how that works, um, but th there may be some opportunity oh. to do something like that because... Uh, what's interesting is um, the freshness value and the reset counter, it always reads them from can to start. So there's these numbers, you know, that are that are uh, passed in to, to the hashing function uh, as kind of like a salt or whatever that are the the uh, uh, numbers that are always supposed to be incrementing. The, the trip counter is never supposed to roll over, essentially. I mean, it can, but it should take a super long time because the trip counter is every time the, the ECU powers on. And then there's a reset counter that uh, resets more frequently. And the trip counter, it reads off can every time. So like, I also kind of feel like, yeah, maybe there is some opportunity to um, have it be more deterministic, you know, what what the values are that, um, like like what the the signatures are for, um, specific messages and be able to do, you know, kind of like essentially a replay type attack. If we um, have, if we have rainbow know. tables that we have on our servers, we can only include it with comma prime. <laughs> yeah. You want to, you want to get the key to your Toyota? You got to buy super prime $44 a month. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see We'll see how many, uh, I, I hope something like that's possible. Yeah, I mean, the, there's no question that you could that you could reflash the firmware and uh, and uh, you know adjust the <clears throat> adjust the uh, wait um, whether or not the seco C stuff is enforced or not. There's a there's a there's configuration tables that contain what addresses um, seco C applies to, and wait, wait, how do, uh, how there's do, like flags with it. How do I reflash the firmware? Do I need to take the thing out and glitch it? I don't. Well, no. I mean, you can you can definitely flash the firmware wherever can. Um, I haven't looked super deep into the firmware flashing, so the thing I don't know is, uh, I think the firmware might be encrypted. Uh, but again, 
Um, the, to, the, new, the new Toyota stuff. Sure. The new Toyota stuff is all encrypted. When you download like Q files and stuff. I see. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know what it's encrypted by or how any of this stuff works, but I know that I downloaded the Q files for like the uh, the 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 Sequoia cars and uh, it was all encrypted. Yeah. So yeah, reflashing the firmware isn't super attractive, but <laughs> that might be. Uh, well, one one way to potentially get rid of the yeah reflashing the firmware is a lot better if we can read the initial firmware. But I'm sure those keys are in there. Like I'm sure the keys to decrypt the firmware are in the other firmware. Right. Yeah. And it's, it, I don't think any, yep. I don't think any of it's asymmetric. So I think if we get it, we can just you know encrypt our own replacement firmware. Yeah. And uh. Yep. Happy to, you know, all right, maybe, maybe that's the first firmware flash we release. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, once I found the, the default keys in the flash, uh, in the firmware dump, uh, Willem was actually able to, um, to construct, um, to construct valid SEC OC messages and get it to parse them. Oh, cool. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Great. Guys, that so, yeah. If there's some way to if there's some way to read the keys, it's it's yeah. Uh, got it. I mean, I don't know. That seems like the best the best option for sure. If there's some way to read the keys. Yeah, I mean, I I've looked. These things just usually don't have like arbitrary read exploits in them because the because the surface is so limited. But maybe. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, and there's no there's no uh, I haven't found any. Um, XCP or CCB, CCP, like the calibration protocols that they that they use to like live tune. I think these things while they develop them, where they can like arbitrarily read and write memory by address. Um, I haven't found any write memory by address. So Toyota has um, so much weird stuff. Like Toyota has so much. I remember when I was looking into like these the smart DSU knockouts. There's like so many layers of of different firmwares in those things i wasn't even sure if like it was almost like like there might even be a hypervisor on some of these no. yeah i don't know I've, uh, but uh yeah no, it's great sounds like there's great progress to everyone in this twitter space you just got the best update on toyota security <laughs> you've ever heard <laughs> uh and uh yeah if you guys buy votes you know we'll get serious about it uh, but no, I mean, it sounds like it's, yep. it sounds like, it's, yeah, it's, I think we have a pretty good understanding of it now, at least. Um, so good stuff. All right, cool. I think we'll leave the Twitter space there. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Scene. Uh, Vivek, did you, did you want to talk? Vivek's a listener. Oh, we really got everyone. We got, we got everyone. Adib showed up for a minute. The whole crew. Uh, no, nah, I think that's, I think that's the tour space. All right. Thank you guys. Uh, make sure you buy comma threes. Otherwise I'm going to get fired and the price is going to go back to uh, 1999. Uh, and they're going to be like bad marketing in turn. Why do you lower the price? It was, it was terrible. Uh, cause we didn't sell more devices. Uh, so make sure you buy, make sure you tell your friends. Uh, no, now's legitimately a great time to buy this product. Uh, this is the first one that's like, it's like good. No, the comma threes and the comma threes coming off the line right now are like good. You know, you should have seen what a shit show Comma 2 production was. Uh, even Comma 3 is in the old office. But in the new office, like, we have, like, a whole line. We have four full-time production people. You know, they're just, they're just building really good devices. Uh, and now they're cheap. So you guys should buy one. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening.